And I'm also going to start live transcript. All right. Okay. So welcome to the May 18th Asia Pacific Chaos Community Call. It's great to have you here. Uh, we have a few things that we're going to talk about uh, today. So I thought we would start out. Okay, so just a couple of things. One is we just from a logistical standpoint, we had talked about using this meeting kind of as a, a, a secondary meeting or another meeting to kind of coincide with the metrics model work because the metrics model work is really starting to gain momentum. And the metrics model meeting is every two weeks. And this meeting is also every two weeks. And we thought it would make sense just to kind of keep the, the pace of the work around metrics models going uh, pretty well. But I, so I think we're gonna talk about metrics models in this meeting as well. But I would also like to say that, um, you know, if we if we're doing a meetup, say an Asia Pacific or a Chinese meetup, like this would be a good uh, a good call to talk about that. So if there are logistics, this would also be a, a fine time to talk about that as well. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then I would just like to say, I had it on the agenda. I'll, I'll share my my screen here, but I'm going to start with it. Uh, so mentorship, I'd like to say congratulations to Shoya. So Shoya has been selected to participate in the Google season of docs for the chaos project. So Shoya, congratulations. I, I don't know if you're on. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> We're excited too. And it's great to have you like participating again. We'll, Shoya, you and I can, or like you, me, Sean, and Elizabeth, we can just talk in order to like take care of all the logistics and just kind of what the focus will be over the course of summer. So it's great to have you back, <laughs> even though you never <laughs> left. <laughs> so thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Uh, we are too. That's great. Um, and then Yuhui, uh, just, just so people know too, just Google Summer of Code update. So we can't talk about on this call who we recommended, but um, the recommendations are in. And Yuhui, I kind of talked to you a little bit, like in yeah, Slack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So at this point, we're just kind of waiting to see what Google does. It's a little bit different this year. So in the past, we would make some recommendations on the number of slots that we would like. So we would just give them a number like eight, six, seven. This year, we had to rank order people. So we had to say who our top candidate was and all the way down through say like 11. So we we did, we did submitted the rank order last Wednesday, I think. And so I, I think we hear relatively soon, but um, more to come on that. So we did have some interest too in the um, kind of the work that you were proposing, Yahui, around the... How long should we wait for the, uh, for the feedback from Google? I don't know, could somebody... Maybe Elizabeth, are you in front of a screen right now? Yeah, I'm looking right now. I'll I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Uh -huh. Soon, hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, so that's the mentorship. So um, really, really great on that. Okay, so uh, with, did you find it, Elizabeth? Or she put it in the chat? I'm still looking, hang on one sec. Okay. All right, so um, last time in the metric model meeting, we had talked about um, sa safety, and I was it June who was talking? I forget who was talking about. Me. You're right. You're right, June. Okay. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so, June, yeah. do you want to, I don't know if you've had a, if you've had any updates on that, or if you want to talk about it just a little bit more, I can make you co-host if you want to share your screen at all. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to show how to <clears throat> show, uh, implement the structure. Like, like the last time we said, you, you asked me how to, what is the structure? Yeah, that'd be great. And by the way, 
Elizabeth just found out. We should know from Google in two days. May 20th. Mm -hmm. Where is Google? That makes me nervous. May 20th. It's yeah. <laughs> so soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, June. Uh, okay, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> So I just want to show what, what is uh, the structure, what is different uh, about the survey, uh, uh, survey, survey metric module bit about. <clears throat> so um, the last time we, um, we um, just uh, show how to um, our, solution proposals about our metric model step two and the only difference about the survey metric model it means we have the different uh, uh, original debt because we have the different way to get our original debt about the survey data set so i i choose the three step to get our uh, survey that the first step is uh, uh, we have to choose a sample size it means uh, uh, we have to choose how many survey data set uh, we have is enough so so this is our upgrading we could use this algorithm to um, to get our uh, number of samples. This uh, Z it means uh, confidence inter interval. Uh, e it means uh, measure of error, and uh, um, P it means uh, popularity of popularity for. Uh, relevant uh, attribute it means it, it means if we have to serve survey students and uh, we have to we have to know um what percent of the students in our community so um if we know this uh, um, parameters uh, uh, value and we can get how um we can get what uh, how many number of samples we needed for example in our community um we know and um, maybe there is uh, for example just an example if there is uh, one one thousand people to use uh, our community or to see our community and maybe we need 100 one hundred samples. It means the uh, and the minus. This is the minus number. It means uh, uh, at least we need to get uh, this number of samples. Our survey data is uh, worse. Otherwise, it is. Uh, otherwise, it is uh, um, cor not correct uh, uh, survey data set. It will uh, make make the wrong, it will make the wrong uh, result about this uh, survey. So this is our uh, first step to choose a uh, uh, sample size. We know how many, how many, how, how many <clears throat> number of samples. And the second step is to uh, design a questionnaire. So we have to we have to see how how to design our questions uh, in our survey and we use the uh, score to uh, to see our questions result like the last meeting i i show we can use uh, those uh, questions to get our uh, questions score like like last meeting, I showed how how to get the safe safe score. And the last step, we have to use modules for that filters. It means uh, if we get uh, one hundred samples, 
but in these samples, uh, they maybe they just uh, want to get some uh, word or some other things. They just uh, put the wrong numbers to to put the wrong numbers to uh, to write write this survey. So we have to use our uh, algorithm or some other modules to get uh, in this survey and um, correct. So we have to use some modules to filter the uh, worst date, the right date. So this is what our, <clears throat> this is, so um, this is the uh, um, algorithm. So, so, uh, this uh, yellow yellow part is uh, uh, what we have to edit about the uh, survey. And um, it's done. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> no, this is great. So thank you for this. Yeah. So the way I understand it is the yellow. So the, the algorithm definition, the yellow in the algorithm definition Yes. is essentially mapped to the linear regression on the left. It's the proposed uh, technique analysis techniques. Is that right? Um, yes, yes. And then the linear regression on the right, the one that has the text with it, is that what would go into the data insight folder? So is this like how we would, as an example, come to understand the results from the data. Is that correct? Mm, um, I'm just trying to maybe, trying maybe. to map the two yellow. So the, the survey data set makes sense to me. So that's the data that you collect from the survey at the bottom. And then the yellow algorithm definition and the yellow data insight. What what are those? What should be going in there? Maybe maybe it's not correct about this this line because the they have another another step to get the data inside. It's not not this step. I see. This step is just to get the right data, or right original data. Gotcha. So you mean the data inside is uh, something we we demoed uh, last time about uh, using Jupyter. To show in yeah. the data insight. Yeah. Okay. So 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 the all this uh, those steps uh, three steps uh, is how to uh, uh, fetching out the data into the data uh, survey data side, right? Yes. Yes. This is okay. correct. Okay. So so why don't we why do you have two arrows? So that's some something mis misleading here i mean this this is a step about data insight okay <laughs> to write to... okay this this makes sense so, i mean the data insight is essentially the that's the narrative right that we provide so like you you had provided yeah. the data the yeah. narrative about how you as a person or you as an employee would come to understand the data that's in front of you. Like what's a sample way to understand that? That's the data insight. So that's kind of the really human component here. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just, just not write it, but uh, yeah, in yeah. In Jupyter we have data insights about so, I, so in this model, I might add underneath use models for data filtering maybe another box that would say like provide yeah. human insight against the data or on the data yeah. and that that yeah. arrow would then point to the data insight box yes they maybe they have another box too so then we'd have two sample size design the questionnaire like specify the models for data filtering and then provide insight and then from those four steps, we can yeah. move the results into the GitHub repository, the respective directories in the GitHub repository. So Matt, when you do, when you do the research, uh, so 
to communicate with the people, uh, you, know, you know, from the different organization in open source. How how do you collect those data and uh, translate it into the, I mean, as the information to get some useful information on your paper? Right. So we, um, it's it's similar to this, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I mean, it's it, the model is actually quite similar. We have. Um, we have some different rules as to what we can provide and can't provide just because as a research institution, we have some like rules on how we handle the data, but fundamentally it's the same, fundamentally it's the same thing. So if, if there was a fourth box below use models for data filtering, I mean, the data insights are really the analysis of the data. That's really what it is. You're just analyzing the data. Um, and so there are some very formal ways that we would analyze the data. Um, but that's a, a big lift sometimes. And I'm not sure that we want to do that here for the metrics models. Gotcha. Um, so for example, if we were to run a survey or to do a series of interviews, there's a whole process by which we have to really formally define our methods by which we analyze the data. So like we create code books, we take a look at the data against the code books, we redefine the code books. Um, we do, for example, frequency counts, or we do, they're just a variety of different ways. But in this case, I'm kind of okay with just relying on like your experience, Yuhui, to provide insights or our experience in the chaos project to provide insights. I think, I think that's an okay step. Does that help at all? Sean, I don't know if you have thoughts on this. I know you're only on chat, but. I think Sean is on, is in another meeting. Yeah, maybe so. He, he can only hear, hear us, but cannot talk. Okay. <laughs> um, I did have a question on, with, with what you were showing June as well. So do we, do we want to provide the questionnaire? Because right now mm -hmm. your questionnaire was not mapped to anything that we would store and make available to people. Maybe we could try, try to try to um, add some questionnaire. Because we uh, What do you think? For the you you mean the safety for the safety of this metrics model, right? Yeah. So right now the the data algorithm folder, it really stores the um, the algorithms necessary to capture trace data off of a GitHub repository. So mm -hmm. the algorithm is kind of focused on data collection. Um, in this case, the algorithm is kind of focused on data analysis. Like how do we actually take a look at the, the results of the survey? Yeah. So do, do we also want to provide the survey in this case? Like this was the survey that was used to collect the data that was analyzed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe, maybe June, you can you can say that about it. If you want to uh, share with your questionnaire for this safety metrics model you use. Okay. We could try to add it. So, and <clears throat> just use fine. an example. Just use use it as an. Example or some implement implementation example. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if you could just include it in the the um, algorithm folder. To be honest with you, <laughs> you know I mean, just put the questionnaire in there and just mark it as a questionnaire.md or something like that. At least for the time being. Okay. Okay, we're gonna add it. Yeah, because the models, I mean, part of what we're, we're aiming at is giving people who are not us the opportunity to deploy the model. And if we can give them the questionnaire, that would help as well. 
Yeah. Okay, great. This is great. Okay. Uh, thank you, June. Um, so then that kind of leads to my one of my questions here. So um, kind of based on on where we're going here. So June, I know that you and, and other folks have been doing a lot of work around the implementations. And that's great. And I know that Sean and Ragava have been doing this as well. And I think we're starting to kind of get this down. This does make me um, think about, hold on a second, how, I think I gotta move something out of the way here. How we think about the structure of the model repository. So this is our current metrics model repository. And right now, we had initially focused on focus areas and we have a folder called toolkits, but we've been kind of focusing on implementations, which is great. And I think implementations folder should stay. Toolkits, I have a pull request in to remove this. And focus areas are aligned with Our work here. So focus areas are just kind of ways that we can categorize the metrics models. The focus area category is it's a leftover from the way that we think about metrics, not necessarily metrics models. So in the, for example, in the risk working group, we have a focus area called security. We have a focus area called business risk, and it's just a way to kind of organize metrics. It's not perfect, but it's a way to think about metrics kind of collectively. Uh -huh. We just, just because we were doing this in the metrics working groups, we just kind of fell to that model in metrics models that we have a focus area called development. We have a focus area called community engagement and so on and so forth. It is not necessary that we, <laughs> that we do this. This is just, this is a first way of thinking about organizing the work. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's these. So these focus areas map to these focus areas. But again, we haven't really been doing that. We've been focusing on this implementations folder, which contains activity, welcomingness, funding, you know, safety, could be one here as well. So the, the question is, is how, how do we want to structure, I'm sorry, how do we want to structure this repository that makes the most sense for us and makes the most sense for other people? Actually, I, I have a similar questions about about the whole structures of this, this uh, about about our matrix model um i have one idea is to to compose the all the i mean the organized all the matrix model in uh, with way of the uh, ecosystem point of view for example from ecosystem point of view we have uh, productivity productivity we have robustness, we have niche creation. This, this three aspect respect for the, uh, the whole ecosystem. But this is the only one uh, angle or point. What was the last one, niche? Uh, niche creation, productivity, robustness, and the niche creation. I get it, I got it there, okay. Actually, th this three point uh, come from the uh, one paper uh, related to the ecosystem, which kind of famous uh, about it. It's coming from the Hubble. Uh, uh, I can share with you the uh, ecosystem legend. 
Um, let's try. So would your proposal be, as you're looking that up, would your proposal to be like under? Uh, oh, go ahead. We have three three subfolders or sub categories for for all the metrics model. Do you think okay. that would be under the implementations? So like I would get rid of toolkits. I'd get rid of focus areas. Uh, maybe I can share it. Uh... Yeah, I can make you co-host and stop my share. Do you want to share your screen, Yuhui? Uh, sure, I can share my screen. I'm not sure. Uh, have you ever read this paper written by Marco and Ron Levin? No, I haven't. Strategy seen. as a, I do a lot uh, ecology, and uh, he have uh, three. Three aspect to to marry the whole ecosystem productivity. And and the robustness and the niche creation and this three aspects are also used in the as i saw some papers uh, in the open source related related area they also uh, reuse this concept in the open source ecosystem to uh, uh, to divide the whole uh, mirroring uh, scope into two into three aspects. So uh, I I was thinking I'm th I was thinking that if we could uh, uh, divide our matrix model into three aspects like this, but this is only from the ecosystem point of view, it cannot cover everything. So that's that's the first idea. So okay, so this makes sense. Um... So when you say, so niche creation, productivity and robustness would be part of defining the ecosystem. Are there, what, what are the, the other categories that are not ecosystem in your mind? Yeah, maybe, uh, for example, not all the open source project could be treated as an ecosystem. For example, a, a plugin, uh, open source software. It's only, belong, for example, one plugin of the VS code. This plugin is uh, open source, but uh, sure. it's um, per se it's it's uh, it's uh, independent. Cannot be treated as ecosystem. It it had to belong to some big uh, uh, ecosystem like a VS code. So this this kind of open source project or community, we cannot use this. Uh, Echo, uh, we cannot use echo, uh, ecosystem to describe this project. But for the big communities, like uh, this community provide a software platform, this kind of project or community could be treated or described uh, as an ecosystem. I got you. So OK, that makes sense. So then is, I mean, is any, sorry, no, no. Uh, is any ecosystem system community implement the, this three um, metric or this this paper is any uh, yeah yeah I, I saw some papers I, I can I can share with you later I saw some papers to use this concept to to marry the the communities and uh, you use some uh, metric to implement uh, this. Yes, yes. I have a comment. Uh -huh. uh, so are we talking about using um, productivity, niche creation, and uh, robustness to categorize the matrix models? C categorize matrix models. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's one um, of my idea. Oh, that, that makes sense. Uh, well, um, while I was looking at the um, 
readme file of the matrix model repository and uh, looking at the goal. Um, the goal of this is to um, like to um, uh, combine different metrics together and make a model really uh, can be applied in practice. So um, how about um, this is just an initial idea. So I, I haven't think about an actual um, uh, categorization yet, but um, maybe uh, I was thinking to cut um, to make the structure um, instead of using uh, Fox areas like describing um, the the area the matrix is belong to, um, like the aspect this matrix or matrix mo model is um, belongs to. Uh, instead instead of doing this, we can um, categorize them as what kind of like how you can use it the area you can use it, like what kind of decisions you can use a matrix model, since we want to make them to be more practical. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like that. And I like the idea of moving away from focus areas, Shoya. I think that's a, I think that's something that we need to do no matter what. Um, so, so I know you said you hadn't thought about it. Do you have an example? <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Julie, can I, I was going to share my screen. Could you stop sharing? Yeah, sure. you, if you have an example, like, is it like, would it be like, make better, like a, a category would be make better decisions about the communities you participate in <laughs> something like that that's a little that's a lot of words but <laughs> like um like uh, uh we can have categories like um if you want uh, like um um con contributor growth like if your goal uh the goal of your community is to to um, involve more contributors. These are the metrics models you, um, you, 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 you can have a look, but I just realized that community growth, growth seems to be one of the Fox areas of chaos metrics. Uh, it, it's also similar, like uh, focus area. I mean, you mean, yes, you mean, I just realized that. Yeah. I mean, my purpose is to increase my size of the uh, creator, uh, contributor in my community. So that's my focus area to for the community engagement, something like that. So, so then within this, I mean, you know, we would have, if it was say productivity, I'd have to read the paper. I don't quite know how they define the terms and I don't mean that I just need to read the paper, but productivity would be then a metrics model like this. It's, right? it's more like, like a focus area or aspect to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. The productivity is some, uh, uh, what, what I what can say that uh, it's showing the, the uh, capability of this community. So, uh, to uh, the service or our capability to provide as a as co as a software or as okay. a service for the contributors. That's the productivity provided by, okay. uh, by 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 this open source. Gotcha. Yeah. So then, like, I ha I'll, I'll read the paper for sure because then I'll get better understanding of the definitions of productivity, mm -hmm. robustness, and niche creation. So, with that, then. In, in your mind, Yahui or Shoya. So I think we can get rid of this toolkits folder. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of keeping everything in implementations just because yeah. that, that's that's like where people need to go to find the things. And if we, I don't think we wanna split, like have focus areas and then have implementations. And so I actually like the term implementations I have no problem with that. Um, so then in here, would we create a folder 
essentially that's called like productivity. Mm -hmm. Is that what you see? And then robustness uh, and niche creation. Yeah, yeah. For example, com community activity, we would uh, move it to the robustness. Yes. Because okay. yeah, because uh, the more active of this community means they can uh, you mean defense some uh, unexpected uh, risk from outside or from inside. So that's what we want want to put this activity into this robustness. Gotcha. And yeah. So then I'm wondering, and, you go ahead. And also I I noticed that there there already have some metrics model related to the sustainability. I mean it's also part of the uh, the whole ecosystem concept. Mm -hmm. We can also put those metrics model into these folders. Yeah, I, I agree. And I actually, I like the, the sim Simply3. Um, Maybe later I can share you, share with you, all, all you guys, more papers related to, related to the open source ecosystem papers. I read something about it. And there are a lot of papers related to the, this. And also I, I noticed that you and Shane, uh, read some papers and uh, read, written by you, and they also mentioned this, this concept before. So, yeah, and I, I, I like that. And I think that the communities that we work with care immensely about the ecosystem. <laughs> I think that's a nice a nice view of the world as opposed to just project by project. Mm -hmm. mm. So Shoya, I had a question for you. You had used a phrase, like another, it's to focus on goals or to focus on like tasks. Was that, do you remember what you said? Uh, yeah, uh, my, my idea is to categorize metrics models by the goal of using it. Um, like some metrics models are for involve more contributors and some are for um, improve your uh, software quality mm. but it doesn't to be really um, the phrase doesn't have to be be like that um, so I, actually I think so yeah we can we can combine those two ideas together for example you mentioned the software so, software quality we can put it as a part of productivity things because that's one thing um, that's one uh, way to show in the, to show the productivity aspect yes um yes they, they are they they have um they have uh the um uh but uh, it, what i was thinking is people always uh come to matrix models with certain certain aims and uh, they have their requ require, and um, if uh, and um, if we have uh, them structured with um, that, um, clear illustr clear explained um, goal of of those models, the clear usage of those models, and they can know exactly which are the. Um, or which area they should they, they should look look at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, for this point i agree with you so yeah so so this this structure would help people to clear uh, to easily find out what kind of matches what they models, want uh, what they want yes. yeah exactly from the uh, based on the personality from the you know, as an individual developer or community manager sure so, so, to so I'm going to take an action. I'm going to redesign this repository for the next metrics model re meeting. Not, I'll, I'll do it as a as a forked repository, but just based on this conversation, I was wondering too, listening to Yehoi and Choya, listening to the two of you talk, um, like like renaming the implementations folder to something like desired aims or desired goals <laughs> or hopes and dreams, like something that that would signal to a person like yeah 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, so actually, we we uh, we already do something in the metrics model. Uh, I mean, the in the definition part, we 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 either use the stories and the use cases to describe what what kind of um, uh, scenarios could uh, adapt this could be adapted to yeah. this metrics model, Scenarios. and who can yeah who can use this metrics model? I, I think we can, we already add the, such information into the definition of the model. And then I would I, I think I could just rename this folder to something that is like that. <laughs> like when it is clear to people. I could just say these are, you know, scenarios, I think is a good word, potentially. And then still, then we maintain this structure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this, yeah. this still yeah. not that structure, but this structure still stays the same. Because I really, I do like this structure a lot. Um, but oh, then okay. in here, instead of these at the top level, it would be uh, whatever it was, uh, not productivity. Oh yeah, productivity. Sorry, it'd be productivity, robustness, and niche creation. And then within there, we would have the three different metrics models or the, yes. the many different metrics models. Okay, I like that better. And then we get away from, I'll have to update this as well to reflect mm -hmm. the three. And then we'd have to move some, you know, we'd have to rearrange this a little bit. Yep. But I, I like the idea of getting away from the term focus area because that's a term that, is kind of unique to the metrics working groups. And I think it creates confusion if we use that error, the term. Exactly. I think we want to separate ourselves a little bit. And then we can go with these terms that you provide, Yahui, and also kind of the language that you are suggesting, Shoya. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe we can uh, continue this discussion on the made decisions in the next uh, metrics model meeting. Yeah, and that's why I'll, I'll bring a I'll bring a full design to the metrics model meeting, and you can all tell me that's terrible. I love it. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we can <laughs> yeah. based on this conversation. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Can you help me? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm trying to catch up, and uh, if I understand correctly, you are trying to categorize all the metrics models into some kind of logic structure. Are we trying to do this? Yes, correct. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. And I really like the ecosystem view. And uh, I did some survey before. So I have a suggestion, maybe. Um, can we organize these metrics in, into different perspectives? For example, for... Uh, software uh, artifacts perspectives yeah artifacts for example code and uh, document and about code or document and uh, uh, other pers perspectives for example social aspects about human, about the community around the, the project. Yeah, and we can combine these different perspectives with the ecosystem model and can generate different kind of concepts about what we are talking about when we talk about productivity, for example. So, so what do you mean? It's uh, in the different aspect. Uh, I mean, in the three aspect, productivity. We have a hierarchical structure into the one uh, aspect. For example, in productivity, we have three subfolders. One is software artifact, and the second yeah. is the social aspects. Right. I, I suggest. I think so. Maybe, for example, about uh, productivity about. Uh, code development, about mm. code quality, it's uh, maybe robustness. For human, uh, we used to do some research about the engagement of programmers, developers. So they have this mm -hmm. concept of uh, perceived productivity. Yeah, I would recommend move it into the robustness. It's uh, also we, uh, talking about the developer retention and, uh, and uh, involvement. Um, we will right, suggest, right. suggest to put it into the robustness. 
because more people, uh, uh, new people come to the community and stay here for a long time, that would make this community stable. Okay. Uh, maybe every uh, every aspect of the ecosystem can have perspectives about uh, artifact and social aspects. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. It, it okay. might be nice to Liang's point that if we could repeat these headers within each one of the categories, that might be a nice structure. I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, I have a comment. Um, I think, uh, uh, how about uh, we put uh, the implement file um, into each metric model? And uh, I think by this way, uh, well, a new um, well, a new user come to chaos, he will see the definition of each metric model. And in the next file, he will see uh, how to implement the metric model. I think uh, it's more uh, friendly uh, for, um, new, um, for new user. You mean the put uh, implementation and, uh, and the definition of the metrics model together into one folder, right? Uh, okay, uh, yes, mm, and uh, it will be under mm, under, under uh, a file, which is named by the metric model. Okay, so for example, here metrics model two, we have an implementation folder and another folder is about definition, right? Mm, yes. Uh-huh. Am I getting this right? I I hope I am. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe Chenqi, you can you repeat it again. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, and you have read my idea correctly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right, Matt. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to follow all. All right, this is a this is a good structure. Sean has a comment. Um, Okay, so Sean is suggesting a flatter structure, so kind of a different direction. Um, Sean, if you have ideas, feel free to to add them here. I, um, mm. Just based on the comment, it's hard to know. Oh, okay. Again, so, I mean, I can bring this forward in the metrics model meeting. I think is the way to go here. You know uh, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And then we can see it, and then we can say that's like I said. We can say it's terrible. We can say it's great. <laughs> we can, we can. It gives us something to work from. So that's. But more or less, I I, I can say that Shane kind of supported with us with our idea because he more or less to say the flatter structure instead of complex structure as a focus area we use in metrics. When, and maybe when we create this for the metrics model meeting, we'll see ways to flatten it. You know what I mean? So sometimes. Yeah, see, you, see you next week. Okay, see you. Okay, we're at the end. Yes, exactly. Good discussion. We'll see you next week, okay? Thanks, everyone. See you. See you. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.